Hello, Popper fans. This is Methonical. You're joining me for round eight, also known as the semifinals for the Popper Challenge on October the 29th. Our opening hand is completely reasonable. We've got some removal. We've got our three minute spectre for Skyfisher combo and a bunch of lands. So we're going to easily keep this one and get out our Thraven Inspector. We are playing against Affinity. Uh, this isn't that ideal for us. Our, while our deck is very well posed in the metagame, Affinity is probably one of our weaker matchups, unfortunately. Losing the red means we don't have access to the uh, Gorilla Shaman anymore, even though it does give us Pestilence, which is great in a lot of matchups. But we're just going to play our value plan of getting the core Skyfisher down, bouncing Thraven Inspector, and we do Edict there. I'm basically hoping to just reduce their mana available. But I believe I probably should have just not done that after the, like this turn where he started playing a bunch of things. I'm like, dang, I did get punished. The best line would have been to just wait, play Pestilence. Pestilence for one to get rid of the, uh, the husk creature, the germ. And then we would have had Chainer's Edict plus Doomblade here to start removing some of their creatures. So, unfortunately I didn't pick the best line. Uh, here I go ahead and draw an extra card with Clue, and I do want to Doomblade the Atog. It doesn't play the best around any kind of counter spells, and I get punished really hard. Turns out he has a main board Dispel. That is not something I was playing around, and it ends up punishing us pretty hard. Since I really did need to remove that Atog. Uh, that does force us to Chump Block. And I am able to gain a bunch of extra life with the Lone Missionary, but we're basically still on the Chump Block plan. As, uh, but if he ever draws a Team or Battle Rage, we're kind of just dead on the spot. Perilous Research is something that is quite interesting in the current metagame. It, that does play fairly well around removal spells, being able to sack things that are trying to be removed. He's able to just get in as much as he wants, and we do have to respect the amount of things he could sack. So we throw some things in front, and things are not looking that great, to be honest. And an additional Pestilence is not really what we're looking for. We need ways of getting the Atogs off the battlefield first. Um, next turn, we're basically looking at just trying to Pestilence, but since he's able to remove one of our creatures, and we don't have an instant speed removal spell, he can basically kill us. Uh, we are representing a Prismatic Strand, so we can kind of hope that that's enough to prevent our opponent from going all in on the combo of just killing us. And to play to that effect even more, I block the Mirror Enforcer to try and say, hey, you can't kill me this turn. It does end up buying us one additional turn, since they didn't go all in on it, but they did leave us a position that we aren't real. like, even if we do draw Prismatic Strands, we're still going to die to the two artifact creatures, and that's exactly what ends up happening. So, at this point, I just kind of pass the turn and see what our opponent does. Our opponent swings with everything, and we take it. No point in even showing the Prismatic Strands at this point. They were playing around it last turn, and then we ended up drawing it. Yeah, you know. So, that brings us on to game two. Uh, things do get a little bit better after sideboard. Uh, I don't like Palace Sentinels since they have so many 4-4s four and large creatures. If we play it down, we end up getting a jump block. Possibly it might be better in the matchup than I'm giving it credit, because drawing additional cards might give us additional chump blockers or just things to extend the game to get in their way. I did bring in the Coalition R guards to deal with uh, possibly breaking up their combo of Fling or Team or, ba team or Battle Rage. Uh, of course, Skill Veniclas can kill it, but we do have Prismatic Strands to hopefully play around that. Doom Blades are exactly what we want. We want to be able to kill all of their creatures if possible. And I take out the Gift of Rezova since that's not going to be that great here, since they can just usually kill it. Uh, yeah, I also take out the one, uh, well, like one of the even Rift Watchers. It's basically just going to be something that gets in the way, like perhaps we want it as a chump block type effect. Perhaps I'd want to bring out some of the uh, Knight's Whisper, it's hard to say. But essentially I would prefer extra removal spells. The board wipes in our deck are a little hard to hit their deck since if they have an Atog, our board wipes don't really do anything there. And trying to pay 4 life to kill all their 4-4s four does mean we're losing anything on our side of the board as well. So it's a bit of a tough matchup but we're doing the best we can. 
taking a look at our opening hand. Uh, perfectly reasonable keep. We have early removal, pestilence, prismatic strands, everything looks pretty good, so we're going to go ahead and keep this. Playing a Springleaf Drum down turn one, that is fine. We just didn't want to see a germ token spawn, so that way our Chainer's Edict is still online. Getting a Thraven Inspector is nice, that means we can basically draw an additional card here. That is nice. They play a 4 4, so we're just going to cash in our Chainer's Edict since it's a good spot for it, but they are able to cash it in for a Perilous Research. So that is pretty good tech for the current metagame. I can see why this. Affinity player, AK1, has done quite well this time. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get our Pestilence online with the intention of basically minus fouring, or basically doing four damage to everything to wipe his board. This is a pretty good spot for it. And since that's our plan, we might as well just get in some additional life with uh, jump blocking with our third inspector. He plays a bunch of stuff, and yeah, we're just going to pass the turn. Uh, we do have the, the plan, like we could... We have a lot of options here, essentially. Uh, I guess I'll pause to go over them all. Basically, we can either take 8, end of turn, deal 4 damage, kill both of his guys, all our friends from playing additional creatures, and then we do get to keep the Pestilence and possibly play the Coalition Honor Guard. The other option, as you saw, was cast the Prismatic Strands now, so that way I can prevent all the damage. That way I have it in the Graveyard. So that way, next turn, if I choose to take the 8, I can kill his creatures at the end of the turn, then play the Coalition Honor Guard, and then I have protection effects to protect against a Galvanic Blast, so that way I can make sure to keep my Prismatic Strands on the board. I felt like this was a much better plan, uh, given the board state. Mm -hmm. uh, you, We really want to find opportunities to get this into the graveyard, to have it as a free effect, and this was a good opportunity to do it, since it would prevent all the damage. And over the long term, this is this has a lot of upside. Of course we do have the second Pestilence, so the other option was also very reasonable. Uh, now, this since we drew a creature that we can play after using Pestilence, I'm going to go ahead and use Pestilence here. Clear his board, I'm going to play the Core Skyfisher, I'm going to bring back the Crossroads to gain an additional 2 life. And since he's going for the Galvanic Blast, this is why we have the Prismatic Strands in the Graveyard, we'll protect ourselves and keep the Pestilence on the battlefield. He ends up having a second Galvanic Blast, they drew off the top, that is fine, no big deal. We do have initial Pestilences. So we're just going to get down our Coalition Honor Guard here. Seeing Frog Mites is fine, we're going to be able to use our Pestilences to uh, deal with both the Frog Mites and start making him sacrifice things to the Atog. So I am quite content here. I'm trying to cash in the Doom Blade to see if we can actually just kill the Atog outright, but it turns out that he is drawing as many cards as he possibly can. He gets lucky and does get into the spell. I thought he was going to sacrifice the Atog, but it does show you the cards before you sacrifice, so he did draw the spell, he didn't save it. Yeah. Anyway, if we go for the Pestilence plan, uh, we play our Wall of Hope first, just to gain some additional life. Uh, this gives us reasonable chances to survive against uh, anything. Uh, we did have the Coalition Honor Guard protect against Team of Battle Rage, but it turns out yet another Galvanic Blast to remove it. Now we're just kind of hoping that they don't have the, Gal like, the Team of Battle Rage. Thankfully they do not, but we do still have to lose our wall in the process. Alright, so now we're basically just trying to leverage this Pestilence as much as possible. You'll see that there is some good stuff we can do with it. We'll just uh, help this thing along to skip to our turn. Seems to be having some issues. There we go. Alright, so on our turn we're going to activate it once, do a damage, activate it again. When he goes to sacrifice, in response we're going to activate it. And this is going to create a loop for everything he sac sacrifices. I can just continually activate this over and over again. I want to try and reduce his artifact count as much as possible. Uh, the reason being, I want to not die to him just being able to sag a bunch of things without a team of battle rage. Thankfully I was able to reduce his artifact count considerably and drawing the core skyfisher is ideal since I'm going to be able to play that this turn as something to get in front of the Atog and then I can do this all over again next turn. So it's being a little slow so we're just going to jump ahead. Very easy with what I was going through. 
if he attacks, I'm going to block. He just plays a Mirror Enforcer, that's fine. We're just going to throw our creature in front, as intended. And he sacrifices one of his permanents. Here we're able to now start using Pestilence. This Chainer's Edict is amazing. It means that we can use our last black mana to just make him sack the Atog outright. And yeah. We go through the same plan. Make him sack a lot of his things. We make him sack all the way down to just two lands left. And then we leave up a black mana because we're going to Chainer's Edict here. It turns out that... He does have a fling, so he catches in the rest of his stuff to fling us. Uh, I guess that was just the best plan considering what he had in hand. But we're able to get the lone missionary online, and we're going to be able to swing in and try and win. There was the option that we play the Pestilence and try and win with that, but we didn't have enough black mana to play it and win in a turn, and we wouldn't be able to keep it around, which is why we held it in hand. But here we were able to attack in for two damage, and now we play the Pestilence. Uh, with the intention of dealing two damage with it. So, Moto's still being a little bit slow on this replay, but that is what happens, and we do end up winning game two. Let's jump on over to game three. And we will take a look at our opening hand. Opening hand is solid. Guardian can get in front of a Tog forever. Uh, the Honor Guard can hopefully shut down any Team or Battle Rage things. Chainer's Edict is nice. Lone Missionary can buy some time. Got some lands. Would like a fourth land, but this is pretty good considering. And we should be able to draw a fourth land at some point. Pestilence, another four drop. Not what we're looking for. We'd like a land drop. But so far it should be fine. We're just going to play out our Lone Missionary. We will trade it just to try and remove creatures off of his side of the board since we do have this Chainer's Edict and we don't want him to have creatures. The Doomblade means we can get in with that at some point, hopefully aiming for an Atog. And we do Chainer's Edict his Frogmites. Here, uh, basically, I was a little concerned about some kind of counter effects or perilous research. So I went for the Doomblade because I really want the Atog off the board. And I'm assuming, since he likely has more perilous researches than dispels, that that's what he would go for. It turns out he did have a dispel. If I wanted to play around a spell, Chain of is the better route, because then I can get rid of the Mirror Enforcer, and it's very unlikely that he can combo kill me next turn, although it's not impossible. But I do believe it would have been better to go for the Chainer's Edict there, just it has the best upside. Uh, but I end up getting massively punished for going for the Doom Blade. It turns out he's able to go for a Galvanic Glass to a face, sack a ton of things, and has exactly lethal. Very unfortunate. Uh, but Affinity is a bit of a tough matchup with the current build. It's very close, and he does end up getting the better of us. So AK1 gets to go on to the finals, and our run this time stops here. Thank you very much for joining me, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed this series. If you have, please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, let me know what things you've liked about this series, what things I can improve on, and I'm going to keep improving my content for all of you. And yeah, once again, thank you and have yourselves a great day.